Hello and welcome back to Let's Make a Game in C++ and this is episode 9. It's been some time since the last episode but I finally decided that this episode is going to cover loading images and rendering them on the screen. So without further ado let's get right into preparing our desktop because first we have to install a SDL add-on or a plugin, uh, whichever you want. Uh, it's called SDL image and with it we gain a function which we can use to load a PNG, JPEG, BMP and other image format. Uh, I should uh, tell you that the pure SDL has a function to load images but it has restrictions and maybe some problems I don't know really and that's why we use the add-on called SDL image and let's first get on Windows and install it here because it always takes longer on Windows so first you have to download the package and simply go to Google and Google for SDL image should be the first link and there you have to download for the binary Windows and the second one SDL image develop so for development download that and after you've finished you'll get a zip and you should extract that and get a folder and in the folder you'll find an include folder and a lib folder similar to what we had in the SDL folder so this on the right is the image folder and here on the left is the SDL folder so what we're going to do is to add the plugin to SDL so simply copy everything in the image folder in the in the include for the in the SDL image into the include folder into SDL make sure it's in the SDL map so in here where we have all the other SDL headers paste this yes I already did it and also copy the lib this one into the lib folder in SDL where you have your SDL install paste here yes and you can also copy all those DLL files into the bind folder in SDL so you'll have them later here because you're going to need them later when you're going to execute the game or the program now we have SDL prepared this is our SDL folder it has the include it has the SDL image in it let me just find it SDL SDL image 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 oh here is it and we have the lib here SDL image now we have prepared everything on for SDL now let's start up code blocks and let's make a new project empty project and let's name it image desk next yes we want the compiler next we want to click on the project and cl click file new file C or C++ source next C++ we name it let's name it main and we also added to debug and release so click all and save uh, this way we're going to have here's the workspace project the sources and the main CPT and now let's just do a simple test if it loads so include sdl.h include sdl opengl.h and include sdl under dash image dot h so like this uh, on linux the code is a little different on linux there's sdl dash sdl image and for same for the other one but this is on windows uh, int main the default main and let's 
let's just initialize SDL here. Now you have to check. Right click on the project and properties, project build options, linker settings, and other linker option. We already put in something in the first episode, so let's put that back. That is minus l mingv32 minus l sdl main minus l sdl minus l opengl32 and minus l glue32. That was th that is the same as we used it in the first episode. Now we simply have to add minus l sdl on the dash image so it knows that we are going to use sdl image okay okay now let's compile and run this and we get an error like in the first episode because it needs the sdl dll let's close this go to the portal where we have the project image test bin debug and now you have to copy in here the binaries from SDL. So we need SDL DLL and you also make sure that you copy SDL image and lib PNG if you're going to use PNGs or JPEG uh, and you can also add in lib1 DLL. I'm just going to add SDL DLL, SDL image DLL, lib PNG and zlib and paste them here where the binary has been created and now if you run that again we see that it runs and it doesn't give us an error uh, Windows users make sure that I'm going to go back to Linux now make you sure that when you're going to create the image that you're going to put it in here in the folder where the project is so if if we name the project image test make sure the image is going to be here next to the source file so this is where the file with an image is going to be like test.png or something we're going to use png in this tutorial so put it here and but if you're going to run the game from inside the bin folder so if you like double click on this then make sure that the image is here so make sure just put image here and here so it will always work because if you run the uh, program from the ID from here then the image has to be next to the source and that's basically it for setting up SDL image in on Windows so let's close this and let's go return back to the Linux and all you have to do this is simply install the SDL image package on your Linux distribution it's different on depending on the distribution but if you know a little about your system then it should not be too hard I think that on Ubuntu you have to go to the Synaptic package manager and search for SDL image stick that stick the SDL image and just install it. On Arch Linux is yaur.s SDL. Let's make sure. It's SDL image. Something like that. But you should probably know because you're on your distribution. On Ubuntu, I know that you have to go to the Synaptic Package Manager and search for SDL image and stick it and it should install it when you do that on your on arch you use a package vendor patman or yaur to download it now we can get to the programming this is the code from last time and as you can see I'm going to use a little cheat sheet here because again we're going to have to use some strange functions as always and this is our code this is our these are our includes let's add SDL 
SDL under dash image dot h uh, because there are going to be some weird functions please make sure to check the source that I'm going to include in the video info because so you don't make a typo and now when we have this we're going to make a function which we're going to use to load the images I'm going to include the string library so we can use strings and let's make the function so the function the return type is going to be glunt let's name the function load texture and the parameter is going to be constant string so uh, name of the file and we're going to name it file name and now first we have to load the image into an SDL surface and we do that by using SDL surface which is a type in SDL make a new data and call the function image load which is a SDL image add-on function which loads an image and then we simply put in the file name in here so this is a C type string of this uh, you don't have to worry if you don't quite understand this just copy this function I'm going to give and it should work so this is for loading the image into an SDL surface now we have to set the display format of the image so SDL display format alpha image now we have to create a texture so unsigned unsigned object so it's object zero so text is zero then we have to generate a texture with gl gen textures one and we have to name where so object then we bind the texture to gl texture 2d so gl bind texture gl texture 2d and what we're going to bind that is the object and then there are some functions which I'm just going to copy that are used to create a texture out of the SDL surface these two these four functions set how the texture is going to behave like it's going to clamp to the edge of the area that it's being rendered to I mean blended to this one and this function actually creates the texture from the SDL surface and at the end we free this SDL surface following the SDL free surface function so this is the function uh, just make sure you copy it correctly from the source that I'm going to include and you're already set to go to load images and use them so let's get to our code and before the main loop no yeah before the main loop is the main game loop we're going to load an image and we do that we have to make a data so unsigned int and let's name it for now pad texture and set it to no actually set it to zero doesn't matter so if you want to load that image you have to use an unsigned int for type and then you simply put an int and then we can load the image pad texture is equal to load texture we call the function we just wrote and then we name in the parameter the name of the file let's call it test.png and I'm just going to create an image 
first bring up GIMP some very simple image uh, let's make file new let's make it 60 by 40 pixels ok and let's just draw something on it uh, some other color let's make it like something like this is going to be a very ugly image but that's basically it uh, you have to make sure that the image is in red green blue and alpha format which means that you have to create an alpha layer so some some paint uh, image editors automatically add an alpha layer in GIMP you have to add it with add alpha channel and I know that paint.net automatically creates an alpha layer I don't know if Microsoft Paint does it but if it does not have an alpha layer that then you will get strange results when rendering the image so now we have a red I don't know some shape now let's delete what's behind it even though so we have a red shape and all around it is transparent so everything that is transparent is going to not be rendered so we should get a red strange thing on the screen when we render the image so save as let's call it test png and save it to where we have our source file I have it in project and it's png save and save background color make sure that's ticked and this should basically be it save it and now if we look in the folder project we have this is the code and this is the image and now we should be able to load it and make it and draw it in the program so we have the function up here this is the function then we load the image down here we first create space where we're going to save it and then we load it with this so make sure if the image is loaded do a simple C out and print out the the image and if it everything co did correctly then it should print out one so let's compile this make sure that you add dot l sdl image in the linker and I'm going to show that up there just a second so this is the compile command add .l sdl image to the command as I said we, co we compile that and we can then run it I think cd project ah. and as you can see it outputted one which means that the image did load because if, you do if we don't load it here then it outputs zero now we have the image loaded and we can render it to the screen and uh, we render something to the screen in the render part and we're going to render the image onto the pad so this is rendering of the pad and every time you render an image you have to make sure that the color is pure white so currently it's black and we're going to make it white so 255 255 255 because you have to render um, blend an image to a white space so white color then we have to set which image we're going to use for 
blending. So we GL enable, first we enable it. GL texture 2D. This is how we say that we're going to blend an image, a texture. Then we set which texture we're going to use. So it's GL bind texture, GL texture 2D. So we say where we're going to bind it. And then we say what we're going to bind. And the name of the texture is pad texture. So we started, we enabled blending. We set what we're going to blend, what texture. And at the end of the blending the image, we have to do an GL disable GL texture 2D because if we're going to be rendering from here on without the textures, then we have to disable the texture or we'll, ha we'll get strange results. So make sure that you have GL disable after you ended drawing the texture. And now we simply have to put in all the four coordinates of the texture we want to render. So they go in the same order as the quad, so upper left, upper right, lower right, and lower left corner. I'm just going to put them before the GL vertex function. And the function is GL text coord 2D. A little strange name. And then you simply have to tell it the starting position, the upper left corner is 0, 0. The upper right corner is 1, 0. The lower right corner is 1, 1. And the lower left corner is 0, 1. And it's simple as that. So those zeros and ones mean zero is actually the zero position and one is the width or the height of the image. So if you experiment with these numbers then you can actually blit only a half of an image or a quarter of it. it. Depends on what you put in here but if you want to render the whole image, the whole texture, then put zeros and ones only. So let's compile this and run it and hopefully, no it does not work yet because I forgot that we have, we have to enable blending. I haven't done that up either. Just a second, we have to enable blending and we do that. As you can see, we have disabled. Oh, yeah, we have to put it before. Actually, we can put it after the GL depth tab. So after here, we have to enable blending in OpenGL. So GL enable, GL blend, and we also have to call one function in which we say how we're going to blend. So GL blend function and gl source alpha actually I'm just going to copy that as you can see there are many oh, there are many strange functions which we need to actually get something blended on the screen but that's how it is let's compile that and now we don't have it because I forgot to uncomment the line where do we load the texture. Comment that back, recompile, and rerun the uh, game. And now we finally have the pad as a red whatever on the screen. And that's how you load an image. Actually, first how you set up your desktop to be able to load an image. Then you have to enable blighting images in the initialization part. Then you have to make a function which you use to load the image. And then you actually have to know how to render the image on a 
GL quad. You can render it on different things, but we're rendering on a GL quad. And that's basically it. Please make sure that you look into the source code that I'm going to include. Copy the function. If you want to do some researching on the internet, then do it. But you don't really have to know exactly what this function does and so on. And also make sure you enable GL blending and that you then load the image. Basically what you have to remember is how you render something and that is using the GL enable and GL bind function, GL disable function and GL text coordinate function. These are the important ones which you're going to remember if you're going to do rendering. And that's all for episode 9. See you 